This class is going to be amazing. We're going to learn so much, and I'm so excited to have you here. This class is called Stop Buffering and Feel More. And I love this work because I feel like no matter what your goal is, you are going to be applying these tools that I'm going to teach you today. So everything that we're going to be discussing and coaching on today is all related to buffering. November's theme is stop buffering and feel more. For those of you who don't know what buffering is, buffering is when we use something external to change how we feel internally. Any action that we take to distract ourselves or avoid feeling a feeling. So anything that we're doing too much of that takes us away from where we really wanna be is considered buffering. And so often we judge ourselves for it. It's like, why do I keep doing this? I should have more willpower. I should be better at this, whatever. And we start judging ourselves for it until we realize why we buffer. So we buffer because we want to experience more pleasure than pain. And our brain, that primitive part of our brain, is wired to do that. And it can be any action. It's not just over drinking, overeating. It's not just television or being on your phone. It can be anything that we use to distract ourselves. But the problem is, is that now in our lives, we have so many ways to choose pleasure. We can overspend, we can overdrink, we can overeat, we can overwatch, we can overscroll. There's so many things that increase that dopamine and give us that quick dopamine hit in our lives right now that when that goes unchecked, we just continually increase pleasure to our detriment. Buffering in and of itself is not a bad thing, but every moment that we take up doing an action, taking an action that's buffering is a moment that we haven't used towards something that we really want to do. So maybe you can imagine yourself at a family get together in sometime in the next couple of months and you start to feel anxious or frustrated or something's going on and people are saying things you don't agree with or whatever. And so you start eating because you know that that food initially is going to decrease that uncomfortable emotion a little bit. And so you get that hit of pleasure and it helps you escape the negative emotion for a bit. And so you do it again and you eat more and you eat more and you eat more. And your brain tricks you into believing that's making you happier because then you don't have to feel anxious and you don't have to feel frustrated. But instead of being happier, what you're really doing is just making yourself less aware of the discomfort that you're having. Buffering doesn't take away feelings. It distracts us from them but that distraction, that kind of satisfaction that we get from taking a buffering action is temporary. One way that Brooke has taught this that I absolutely love is when we aren't willing to feel our feelings, it's like trying to push a ball under the water if you're in the ocean or even a pool and you have this beach ball and you push it under the water. If you've ever done that before, you know that it's really hard to hold it down there. And the minute you take your hands off that ball, it's not just going to gently float back up to the surface. It's going to poof, pop way up because the more we try to push it down, we put pressure on it, the more force it comes up with. And, and that happens too with feelings. The more we try to avoid our feelings, feeling a feeling, it's going to come back. And a lot of times it comes back even more strongly. So why would you want to feel instead of buffering? This is the question that I'm asking you to ask yourself. We give up buffering so that we can live into our full potential. So we can stop being dependent on something outside of us and stop taking ourselves away from what we really genuinely want. What do we really want for our lives? What do we wanna look back on in 10 years, in five years, in one year, at the end of this week? And what do we want to have accomplished and achieved? And how are we using up our desire for what we want to achieve when we're overing, when we're doing those things too much that we want to do? Now that we discover these emotions, what do we do practically? Such a great question. And I think that's everybody's question. It's like, well, what do I do? We, we feel the emotion, we allow it. And most of us, 
don't really know what that looks like if we have spent a long time avoiding those emotions, thinking that they're bad, thinking that we shouldn't feel them, thinking that we can't handle them. So when we do this work in scholars of being willing to feel the emotion, it can feel challenging at first because we don't have the experience. So what we do is we get curious about the emotion. The first thing that you're probably going to learn to feel is those urges. You're going to be allowing those urges to be there. You're going to understand why they're there. You're not going to hate yourself for them or beat yourself up for them. You're just going to open up to them and recognize it's all okay.